in about two months, we might be able to redo this as a sprint dog fight. But for now, we can't, so we're just going to call it what it is. What's up, everybody? I'm Noah from Phonog.com, and this is a dog fight by request. By request from several of you out there, actually. The Palm Prix on the left against the HTC Hero on the right. Uh, you could call this the I'm so tired of iPhone dog fight. But, you know, you don't have to. I'm just saying some of you might. But basically, uh, this is a dogfight between what I think are the two best examples, uh, two best pieces of hardware running two of uh, the most interesting new smartphone platforms to come out in the past year or two. Uh, the WebOS running on the Palm Pre. Obviously, the Palm Pre is still the only WebOS device uh, on the market. This past week, rumors surfacing again about the Palm uh, Pixie or EOS or whatever it's going to be called, a GSM candy bar version of pre, I mean of a WebOS phone that may or may not be coming out um, on AT&T in the US this October and then possibly in a CDMA version which would be uh, Sprint or Verizon or both uh, next year. And then on the right we've got the HTC Hero which right now is not available in the US. This is an unlocked version. It has European 3G banding so I'm running it on AT&T right now but no 3G, edge only. Uh, but it's all but certain that this phone will be launching on Sprint in a CDMA version in the U.S. this October. Um, it will probably look slightly different than it does now. Sprint has a history of taking HTC phones and changing the way they look a little bit from the unlocked GSM versions to the Sprint versions. But at any rate, we could well be seeing both of these phones on Sprint later this year, uh, and hopefully we'll see more web OS de devices out on other carriers both the Pre and uh, possibly the EOS, or whatever it's going to be called, in the near future. But anyway, right, here you go. Um, hey, after watching this video, check out the new PhoneDog.com homepage and play the One Pod Bandit for your chance to win free phones. The basics, the form factor here, you've got the uh, Hero is obviously a candy bar phone, touchscreen only, and the Pre is a slider with the full QWERTY on the bottom there. Um, both devices have capacitive touch screens with multi-touch capabilities. Both devices have standard 3.5mm headphone jacks on the top there. Uh, the Hero has a trackball. The Pre does not have a trackball. It has a single uh, button on the bottom and then it has Palm's gesture area along the bottom. So with the Hero, when you're in a an application. We'll launch the web browsers in both of them just to show you how they work. Both devices have Wi-Fi as well. So even though the Pre does do 3G on Sprint's network in the US and uh, the Hero doesn't, I'm connected uh, via Wi-Fi. So anyway, but to show you, we will go to uh, the Palm website and the HTC website just to kind of keep it even there. And so on the Hero, you can move around either via the touch screen or you can use the trackball there at the bottom. And then you've also got um, six buttons, send and cancel. Cancel doubles as power and also as screen lock. You've got home, menu, you've got a search button, and you've got a back button. So if I click on another web link here, if I go to products, and wait for it to load up here, and then I hit the back button from within uh, the standard Android web browser it will take me back a page. Meanwhile with the Pre they've got their own system for dealing with uh, back and forward and stuff like that. If I hit a link and I go forward to go back on the Pre I use this back gesture which is universal across WebOS. I slide from left to right you can see the two little lights lit up in sequence, which means back, and now I've gone back. I can also use the buttons in the web browser to go back a page. So uh, both phones have interesting systems for dealing with navigation and getting around, you know, all the different um, aspects of the UI and the various apps. Um, to make things more complicated and more interesting, HTC also has their Sense UI running on top of the standard Android install here, and that does a few things with some of the standard um, Android gestures like long press and that kind of thing. I won't get too far into detail with that. If you're an Android geek, you know what I'm talking about. You probably know more about it than I do. But uh, basically, you know, with with um, 
Android, you're relying a little more on standard input methods like the buttons and the trackball to get you uh, back and forward and out of applications and things like that. You can, on the uh, touch UI, or the sense UI rather, you can swipe to go from home screen to home screen and that kind of stuff. Uh, whereas on pre, we showed you the gestures and then also the web OS. Uh, instead of getting from screen to screen, you go from card to card, they call it. So I can take my web browser and I slide up, and now I've got it in its own card, and then I can go ahead and I can launch another app, say my calendar, and that'll open up in another card. And then... And so that opens up in another card, and then I can swipe up again to minimize that and go back and forth, and that's kind of how that works on the pre and web OS, whereas on Android, you know, it's kind of one screen at a time, but with background widgets, etc., etc. Anyway, just to say, you know, different methods of navigating around the different elements of the user interface and the applications and all that kind of stuff. Uh, which gets into, without, you know, really meaning to, gets into one of the most notable features about these two devices that I think kind of set them apart from the pack, the way they deal with notifications and system events. Uh, both phones have a status bar up at the top, the pre adds another little status bar, notifications tray, down at the bottom. Android handles notifications up there at the top. So you can see right now on uh, the Hero, I've got a mail icon. So if I slide down, then I get a notification. I have unread mails, unread mails, <laughs> emails, mails in my Gmail. On the pre, if I tap down here at the bottom, it'll show me I've got notifications. I've got new mail, and it actually gives me uh, the subject and header, or I'm sorry, the sender and subject from that most recent mail. And then also um, the Twitter application I'm using, which is called Chui, and that's a homebrew act, app. We'll talk about homebrew in a, a, a little bit. Uh, you can see I've got, you know, notifications down there as well. And so what's, what's cool, I mean, uh, notifications about, you know, unread tweets as well. And what's really cool, what I really like about both of these devices more than I like uh, any other smartphone out there, iPhone OS or Symbian or Windows Mobile, is just the way they, they sort of gracefully and elegantly handle these notifications without getting in your way. Uh, with And I, I prefer actually, I think Pre is an even nicer solution than Android, but Android's pretty good. So with Android, you flick the window shade down, you've got your notifications, you can deal with them, you can leave it there and flick it back up. You can click to see what's going on with one of the notifications, or you can just hit the clear button and they're gone. With pre, you've got them down the bottom, and I double tapped like I showed you, and um, you can do the same thing. You can, or I'm sorry, I single tapped. You can tap to see what's going on with them. If you don't want to deal with them yet, you just swipe down, and they go away. Or you can call them up, and then click on one to see what's going on. So I'll click on the Twitter thing, and it goes away, and then it launches the app, and it shows me what's going on, which is very cool. Or you can just slide it out of the way and not deal with it. And if you noticed on the um, on the pre, when you go to, to view your notifications, the main window just kind of shrinks a little bit, so you can still see your main window and your notifications at the same time, which I think is just really neat. And uh, if you're, you know, an over-connected multitasker, um, it's something you're probably going to appreciate quite a bit. Uh, both devices have kind of a hidden... Uh, quick access to your applications and your dialer and all that kind of stuff, sort of like a launch bar type area. On the Hero and the HTC Sense implementation of it, you've got three buttons down here. This is your application drawer that slides open and shut so you can get to all your programs and you can launch them and you can again roam around with your trackball or, uh, you know, using the touch screen. You can click the phone button to go straight to your phone dialer and then uh, I'm going to hide a little bit of the screen here because I've got my some of my contacts and stuff in there, so we don't want to show you those on the screen. And then you can also hit the plus button, and then you can add something to your home. So you can get a shortcut, you can add a widget, an either an HTC widget from their Sense package or an Android widget, or you can add a folder. So there you go. On the pre, you've got, on WebOS, you've got um, these four, uh, I'm sorry, a five icon launcher tray down here at the bottom, or a shortcut tray. So you can go, you can set these up to be whatever you want them to be, and you can go straight to, you know, I've got my phone, my mail app, my browser, my calendar, and then the launcher. So the launcher will come up, and it'll get you to all your different apps and 
preferences and all that. And you can see with the two little hash marks there that I can slide to the left and now, you know, left and right. Just telling me there's more stuff going on. So I can get all my different uh, applications and shortcuts and stuff hidden away over there. And then I can swipe to get rid of those. Also, what you can do on the pre is from any application that you might be in or any card you might be in, you can just drag up and then you get that shortcut bar and you can go to one of your shortcuts or you can go back to that launcher. So both cool systems for dealing with, you know, just the complexities of these devices, all the different things you can do, all your different applications and shortcuts and widgets and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the big difference there, I think, is just the way that you know, this gets into multitasking and widgets, the way that Palm just puts everything in a card. And whether it's a web page or an application or your calendar or a message or whatever, each thing has its own card and they all keep running in the card. You can have as many cards as you want, although eventually your phone will slow down if you have too many cards going on because there are hardware limitations. On Android, on the other hand, you've only got, you know, one main thing happening at a time, but you can have these different widgets going. Bye.